and welcome to another book review. All right, tonight we're doing book four of nine in the Ali Beckstrom series. Now, this one is called Magic on the Storm, and it continues the ongoing saga of Ali Beckstrom, Xavier Jones, and various other people in the Authority, and various other organizations in Portland, Oregon, and all the various magical shenanigans that keep on expanding throughout the upcoming books, but this is definitely one of the better uh, paced books in the series, I feel like, because the cliffhanger at the end really makes you want to get the next book, and I'm glad that the entire series is out already, because if you had to wait for the fifth book after finding out what happens in this one, ooh, that must not have been pleasant back in 2009 or so, when it originally came out. Uh, yeah, this one really digs into just what is the Authority capable of, and what will they do when it comes to controlling magic, protecting magic, and dealing with magic users, both in the Authority and from without. It was interesting to see some of the voices of the Authority and just how they played out, like, what steps did they take in order to deal with the oncoming storm of wild magic that could effectively like blow out all the uh, tech-based magic? I guess they don't really have magical surge protectors or anything to prevent blowouts, so they had to improvise. And they did. There were various consequences and repercussions, as you will see. Uh, Let's do the back cover so you can kind of get an idea of the overall book amongst the series. Magic stirred in me. I closed my eyes, wanting to lose myself to it, wanting to use magic in every way I could. But that would be bad. I had enough magic inside me, I could burn down a city, and I didn't want to do that. Alison Beckstrom knows better than most that when magic's involved, you always pay. Whether the price is migraines, amnesia, or muscle aches, she is committed to her work as a hound, tracing illegal spells back to their casters. But her job is about to get much more dangerous. There's a storm of apocalyptic force bearing down on Portland, and when it hits, all the magic in the area will turn unstable and destructive. To stop it from taking out the entire city, Ali and her lover, the mysterious Xavian Jones, must work with the Authority, the enigmatic arbiters of all things magic, and make a stand against a magical wild storm that will obliterate all in its path. And that is exactly what they do. It's interesting to see, uh, it's been alluded in the previous books and it's building up that there are problems within the authority. Not everyone is all happy and plays nice with each other. Things come to a breaking point. Not just cracks or fractures, like things break down. It is not pretty. I mean, not as ridiculous as books eight and nine, when it is truly all out, all or nothing, no holds barred. This one, some people still play a few things close to the chest, but it is dramatic. And there's no previews, or like little inside blurbs, so let's do the first page and a paragraph to give you an idea of the writing style. If you're not familiar with this series and you're just jumping into this book review a thon in the middle, if you are, I suggest go back to video one so you can get an idea of the overall story. Because if you're just jumping in on book four, it can be a little weird and confusing. All right. Two months of self-defense classes, mixed martial arts, and weapons training did not make it hurt any less when I was thrown over my opponent's shoulder and slammed into the ground. Yes, I should have tucked and rolled. Would have, too, if he hadn't kept hold of my arm and twisted at just the right instant to knock my balance off and make me sprawl like a dead jumper waiting for my chalk outline. Give up? he asked. My right wrist still locked in his grip, I stretched out my left hand and grabbed his ankle, leveraged to pull down, and twisted. I broke his hold on my wrist and rolled up onto my feet. I got off the mat and out of arm's reach quick. 
I'll take that as a no, then, Xavier Jones asked. He was a little sweaty, a lot relaxed, standing halfway across the mat from me. Barefoot, he had on a pair of jeans that, if there were any justice in the world, would not let him flex and move and stretch the way he did in a fight, and a nice black t-shirt that defined the muscles of his chest, his thick, powerful arms, and his flat, hard stomach. He was every kind of good-looking in the dictionary. Take it as a hell no, I said sweetly. That got a grin out of him, his teeth a flash of white against his dark skin, his thick lips open enough that I suddenly wanted to drop this whole I kill you, you kill me act and kiss the man. Yeah, it continues the same writing style as the previous and following books. Uh, this is kind of Devin Monk's style and voice in all of her series, I want to say. I've only read the first book in the uh, Age of Steam series, so I... I feel that her voice still carries through in that series as well. Different characters, different plot, different happenings and goings-ons, but the still like, conversational style and internal monologues hold through throughout her various series. Now, this book was a lot of fun to read, and as I keep saying, buy the whole series. That way, once you finish each one, because there seems to be a cliffhanger at each one, you can just move right on to the next one because you really do get invested in the characters you're curious to see just what Ali Beckstrom can do what Xavier Jones is fully capable of and it's a lot I mean in the last book they really show every single possible thing that all of these characters can do and more and basically no matter what happens to any given character, there's no guarantee that they are down and out for the overall series. People who die don't stay dead. Some get better, some come back, some change sides, some decide to just wander around a little bit and mess with things. And at this point in the series, you also have the mother-in-law, um, Violet Beckstrom and her personal bodyguard, Kevin, who is also a part of the Authority, and they start getting a little more involved in the goings-on with the Authority and magic. Not fully, yet, but it's not pretty how the technology side of magic and the secret society side of magic mix. And just wait until we start bringing in the hounds, and then the mercs, and everyone else. Oh, it gets so much better. But to find out more, you're going to have to start reading the series, or check out the future book reviews of each following book as I go through the whole series. And as always, if you're interested in the author and her other works, you can go to devonmonk.com. Uh, she has pages for each book, each series. I've been going through the Ali Beckstrom series through these videos. She also has the Age of Steam series up. And, uh, spoilers that I'm, you can get away with. Uh, after the Ali Beckstrom series, there is kind of a follow-up series starting called Broken Magic, where some of the secondary characters in the Ali Beckstrom universe get their own series. Now, if you're familiar enough with Devin Monk, you know exactly which two people I'm talking about. And if you've read the whole series, you know how hilarious this is going to be. And I look very much forward to actually checking that series out. But yeah, as all the previous books, they're available at multiple locations. Barnes & Nobles, Powell's, Amazon. Probably your local library has most of them by now as well. Probably most local bookstores. Uh, I managed to get most of these at uh, my local Barnes and Nobles. They had most of them in stock. Uh, they tend to run for $7.99, but if you look for them online, you can probably find a decent deal somewhere. So, as I've said previously, and I will continue to say, buy the whole series. It's definitely worth the investment. It's a great read. And if you're if you have read this series and this book specifically, what did you think of the battle during the Magic Wild Storm and how it all played out? 
did you think it was well paced? Did you feel like the characters' actions were believable and like justified? Like, did everyone act the way you expected them to? Did people like Jingo Jingo surprise you or not? And considering what happens with Cedra, how do you feel that played out? Do you think there were any kind of previous indications as to what she is and how she acted during all of this? I'm curious to hear other people's opinions on the book and the overall series, so please post a comment and join in the conversation. Alright, so tomorrow we'll be going through Magic at the Gate, which is book 5 of 9, so tune in next time to learn more about the Ali Beckstrom series. Ta-ta!